We have some breaking news right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock. Aurora police are looking for the person who shot two kids early this morning. We're live at the scene as investigators try to piece together what happened. Fire crews are busy this morning working to put out four wildfires across our state. We've had a season of devastating, devastating wildfires. And we'll have an update on the progress they're making and if they'll get any help from the weather today. And it's one of Colorado's most beautiful places. Reservations open today if you're looking to check off seeing the Maroon Bells on your Colorado bucket list, which is still on mine. Yeah. I've seen all the pictures. I know it's gorgeous out there, but I uh, haven't had a chance to make it out there just yet. No. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders and I'm Nicole Brady and we have another warm day today before another shift in the forecast. Hopefully we'll get a little rain and snow to help these fire conditions. Lisa, you're right. It would be nice here by midweek. There's going to be a better chance of getting a little rain and snow here in town. The mountains are going to pick up quite a bit here starting within the next 12 to 18 hours. We'll see some heavier snow down here right now, though. You're going to find a mix of sun and clouds we're right around freezing early on. It feels though like 22. So so a pretty chilly start to our morning. Take a look at the warm up though today. We're going to be in the mid to upper 50s here by lunchtime. Highs will be in the mid to upper 60s between about 3 and 4 o'clock. So it is going to be a fairly mild day today. Fort Collins 62, Greeley 65, 70s down over the southeastern corner of the state. And that is where fire danger is going to be quite a bit higher again today. Future cast though by it looks like early tomorrow morning. More rain, more snow hitting the mountains. Upwards of a foot, Jason, in spots. We'll take a closer look at that and uh, when we're going to see the snow down here coming up. And we do have some sloppy conditions up there right now. I'm not seeing any significant delays because of it. Highest elevations, you're going to find that sloppy uh, conditions up there. Here in town, it's basically dry anywhere you want to go. We did have that. You'll hear more about it here. It's police incident over there uh, out in Aurora at Alameda and Peoria. It looks like traffic's moving around most of the intersection. Maybe a restriction still on the northbound side. As we can see just a little bit east of there here on 225 from the camera over at Alameda. It is quiet. It is dark. It is just moving along just fine and no drive time issues for us as we can see out there this morning. So a nice quiet start just about anywhere you want to go. No issues really on or off the freeways right now. Well, we do have breaking news this morning. Two kids are recovering in the hospital after they were shot early this morning in Aurora. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live from Alameda and Peoria this morning, and this was the center of a big crime scene overnight. It was a big crime scene overnight, but it no longer is. The police is gone. Those officers no longer here. Those evidence markers, they've been picked up. The one thing that is still here, though, those burnout marks from those illegal street races that were happening at this intersection last night. We're near East Alameda and South Peoria. You can see traffic moving now. Officers showed up here late last night after reports of street racing. There were also reports of vehicles blocking the intersection here, even people shooting off fireworks. You mentioned those two juveniles who've been shot. We know they were a boy and a girl. Both of them are expected to survive. However, the suspect or suspects, they still haven't been caught. Aurora police asking anyone out there who knows anything about what happened here late last night to go ahead and call Crime Stoppers Colorado. And they are uh, advising anyone again to just be aware that if there is some illegal street racing, wherever you are, you can report that. All you have to do is go to reportstreetracing.com. We're in Aurora this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. A uh, scary scene for sure. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, meanwhile, fire crews across the state are working to put out four wildfires from Sunday. And as we've talked about with Lisa, the fire danger is still high today, especially in the southern part of our state, though. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office is lifting evacuation notices for a 38 acre fire burning near Curtis Road. That fire is considered to be 100 percent contained. Only one home has burned and other crews are putting out other flames in the area. Crews will be back out in Northwest Pueblo, though, in about two hours where the pause fire is still burning. It's 19 acres and 75% contained. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused that fire. Also, investigators say an unattended campfire started a wildfire near County Road 89 near Cripple Creek in Teller County. It was contained at three acres. A fire closed US 34 as well near Wiggins in Morgan County for about two hours Sunday. 
The city of Aurora wants to make sure you're notified if there is ever an emergency. So today, Aurora City Council will discuss using FEMA's iPaws system. This is the same alert system that's being used in Boulder County right now. iPaws works like Amber Alerts and sends notifications directly to people's phones in a certain geographic area instead of requiring people to opt in. Interior Secretary Deb Holland will be in Boulder County today to discuss how to fight wildfires. The event is part of the Biden administration's rural infrastructure tour. The president's infrastructure law includes investments in forest management as well as post wildfire restoration. Meanwhile, the rebuilding process in Boulder County from the Marshall Fire will take another step forward today. The county is hosting an online workshop with residents to focus on building code requirements and energy efficiency codes. At last check, officials are aiming to have work underway in the next two to four weeks. Today's virtual meeting starts at 6 p.m. You can register to attend on Boulder County's website. Republican candidates that have raised questions about election security will be on the ballot for Colorado's primary. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us live this morning with who's moving on from the party's assembly over the weekend. Christian. Yeah, and during an event over the weekend, many made it clear that they still don't trust the results of the 2020 elections. So they are standing behind some of these candidates who have been the most vocal about this issue. So Secretary of State candidate Tina Peters and U.S. Senate candidate Ron Hanks, they took the lead in their races this weekend. Peters has been indicted over her role in a security breach of Mesa County's voting machines, but she has claimed it was all an attempt to uncover evidence of voter fraud in the 2020 elections. And Colorado elections officials have repeatedly denied claims like this, including just two weeks ahead of a rally that featured Peters and other candidates as well. It's important folks know our process. Our process is transparent. If you visit any one of our websites, we'll rock you through exactly the process and the life of the ballot. We test our equipment in the beginning. We have security protocol throughout. There's state statute that, that makes sure that every county does the same thing. And on Friday, a federal judge actually dismissed an effort by a group of Republicans, including Hanks, who were trying to block unaffiliated voters from the primary elections in June. Live in Denver this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. Democrats held their congressional assembly last week. Most of the candidates for the June 28th primary are incumbents, like representatives Joe Neguse, Jason Crow, and Diana DeGette. The notable exceptions were State Senator Brittany Peterson getting party support to be the nominee in the 7th Congressional District. That's been held by Representative Ed Perlmutter for the last 16 years. He announced back in January he would not run for re-election. State Representative Yadira Caraveo will be the candidate in the newly formed 8th Congressional District. New evidence this morning shows Russian troops are renewing their efforts to control eastern Ukraine. Satellite images show a massive military convoy of tanks and other vehicles stretching eight miles long. It's heading to Kharkiv. The city has already faced weeks of Russian missile attacks. Military analysts say Russia is preparing for a major offensive in the coming days driving from territory they already control in the east. Russian President Vladimir Putin appointed a new general to direct the war. The move comes after Russian troops failed to take the capital of Kyiv. More than 600 local families helped fill dozens of bags of clothes, shoes, backpacks and toys to ship to Ukrainian refugees in Poland. The donations were collected during the Just Between Friends consignment sale in Douglas County over the weekend. Twice a year, local families sell their children's outgrown items to other families at a big discount at that sale. If you want to visit one of Colorado's most beautiful places, reservations open today. The Maroon Bells scenic area near Aspen is scheduled to open May 15th. Parking reservations are $10. If you don't get a parking reservation, the shuttles start May 27th, and experts recommend a reservation for the shuttle as well. You can learn more on the website, aspenchamber.org. Reservations open at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, a beautiful area, but possibly uh, some April snow on the way, Lisa. Yeah, it's going to be snow covered there here in the next 24 hours. We saw some snow this weekend. More to come now. Breezy in town early on. The winds are going to kick back up again tomorrow. Coming up, we're going to take a look at where fire danger is pretty high, and we'll be tracking that heavier snow for the mountains and when we could see some down here, here in just a few minutes. And right now, the drive overall looks pretty nice still. Very quiet for us often on the highways around town, and that includes over here on uh, the C-470 drive 
drive over at Wadsworth. So no issues for us to the south side of town. Highlands Ranch, Ken Carroll looks really nice. We'll take a look at those drive times for you coming up in just a bit. Well, you are running out of time to file your taxes. Tax day is one week from today. The two letters from the IRS you should be on the lookout for before you start the process. And the Broncos are back to work as the Russell Wilson era officially kicks off today. Our Broncos insider Troy Rank has a preview of organized team activities at the UC Health Training Center.